Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ben, and this is the 2024 Gibson SG Supreme. Let's go. The SG Supreme is the latest release in Gibson's modern series of guitars, and I gotta say, it's pretty stunning looking. But before we dive into it, let's just go through a quick bit of history on the SG Supreme model. So in 1999, Gibson releases the SG Supreme model, and this is their attempt at making an SG with a flamed maple top. The side mission of this guitar was also to sort of bridge the gap between the Gibson USA models and the Gibson Custom Shop models. So what you ended up with was actually this pretty cool guitar that had this flame maple cap with a mahogany back. And then on the neck side of things, you had this custom shop looking bound headstock with the ornate split diamond uh, inlay there. And then on the neck, they actually put the inlays from the JT Ryboloff designed uh, SG90 of the early 80s. It was a pretty cool looking guitar. Now in 1999, it was only available with P90s, but in 2000, they added the option of having P90s or 57 pickups. Now that design lasted, I think another year. And then in 2002 or 2003, they cut the option of getting P90s. And the guitar was pretty much only available with the 57 pickups, more or less. And I believe at this point in time, the hardware was also starting to shift over to chrome covered pickups instead of the gold colored hardware that they had before. Now the model was actually relatively successful for an offshoot of Gibson and I think it lasted about nine years until 2008 when Gibson finally pulled the plug. Now we didn't really see anything too similar in this regard until 2016 when they re-released a one-off SG Supreme model which was actually more based on the SG Diablo or the SG uh, carved top, which is pretty much uh, split down the middle between who loves it and who hates it, depending on everyone I've talked to anyway. Now that guitar also brought back some of the SG custom appointments like the larger bound headstock, the more ornate inlays and things like that. I think it was also the 2016 model where they put burst buckers in it which was different from the earlier P90s or the 57 humbuckers. Now that model lasted about 13, 14 months, something like that, before Gibson again pulled the SG Supreme out of circulation. So now here we are, 2024, about eight years after they last released the SG Supreme, and here it is again, and this is in the wine red finish, which it's a very dark wine red. I don't know how well that's gonna shine through, but it's a beautiful burst for sure. So let's get into the specs on this guitar. In September of 2023, when Gibson announced that the Les Paul Supreme model was making a return, it was pretty easy to deduce that the SG Supreme was not far behind that. It also didn't hurt that Caesar, Gibson's CEO, was releasing little hints about the SG Supreme on his Instagram account. So here we are in the middle of February 2024, and Gibson has finally released the SG Supreme. This version is the wine red finish, as you can probably see there but there are three other finishes available, and that would be the trans black ebony finish, the fireburst finish, and exclusively to the Gibson website or the Gibson garage is the all ebony finish. Now, all these models are identical with the exception of the ebony finish, which features three pickups instead of two. Now, the SG Supreme costs $3,500, which is certainly not cheap, but it's $500 less than the Les Paul Supreme model. And while you might think that the SG Supreme is pretty much the SG version of the Les Paul Supreme, it's actually a bit different to warrant mentioning, I think. Now, other than the obvious dimensional differences between a Les Paul guitar and an SG, the biggest difference would be the electronics. Both guitars have the same burst bucker pickups, but on the SG, you only get coil tapping of the neck, coil tapping of the bridge, and that's it. On the Les Paul, you'll also get the phase reversal by pulling the tone knob for the neck, and you'll get the solo switch by pulling the tone knob for the bridge. One other difference between the SG and the Les Paul model is when I pull this cavity cover on the SG, I'm gonna see wires and solder and pots and capacitors and things like that. When I pull the cover on the Les Paul, I'm gonna see a circuit board and a lot of things that some purists might not like. Me personally, I think it's okay. Now, another strange thing is that the Les Paul Supreme that is ebony and available exclusively on the Gibson website is pretty much wired exactly like the SG Supreme that has the ebony finish with the three pickups in that it has a volume, 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 and they all coil tap for the three pickups, 
and then just a master tone that doesn't do anything. So that one actually might vary the most out of all the Les Paul models. But anyway, let's get back to the SG Supreme. Now let's start on the outside and we'll work our way in. So here we start with the case and we can see that it's all black, which is a nice change from the faux brown leather that Gibson's been sending out lately, at least in my opinion. Now when we come around the front here, we can see the Gibson logo and we pop this baby open and you can see it's actually all blacked out in here as well. The entire interior is black, the compartment's black, and the leather pull tab on the compartment is even a little black leather with the Gibson logo embossed in it. So we see the Gibson goodie bag here and inside the Gibson goodie bag we get the Gibson strap, the warranty card, an advertisement for the Gibson app, a blank truss rod cover, owner's manual, a polishing cloth, the Gibson multi-tool, and the keys. But check this case out. It actually really is fully blacked out. On the back side down here, we can see the little black metal bumpers are black as well as these latches. That's pretty slick, I think. Now, when it comes to the look of the SG Supreme, there's a few things you're gonna notice immediately, especially if you're familiar with SGs. I think the biggest, most obvious one is gonna be the new headstock inlay there. Now, this is what Gibson's calling the chandelier design. And while I like it, I'll just admit that I have no frame of reference for it, so it's a little bit unusual to see it on there, and it doesn't really carry any heritage for me, despite the fact that Gibson has said that this is like a design they found in their archives or something like that. Now, another thing you'll notice, of course, is that it's got these uh, super split block inlays there. And now that's something that's borrowed off of the 400 series of guitars, and Gibson's used it on custom shops in the past, so that's not as unfamiliar for me. But I'll say I think that's actually a really nice touch, and I do like that quite a bit. Another thing I think most SG players are going to notice is this little bad boy right here, which is your upper strap button. Now, we don't really see that from Gibson too often. Uh, the only thing I can think of actually would be the Tony Iommi signature SG, and I think they probably did it to offset some of the weight of this huge headstock as well as these locking tuners on here. We'll see how that works. I'm going to give it a go in a little bit here, and... You can be the judge of that. And the last thing I think most SG aficionados are probably going to notice is that the jack plate is on the side here as opposed to the front, where it was on all the previous iterations of the SG Supreme. Now, if you're wondering why I picked the wine red model, I think it is the most unique out of the four finishes that are available. And that's not just because you get this cool tiger striping here. You can get that on some of the other models, but it's the only one where you can see where the maple cap is. On the other finishes, that's covered by some of the bursts, so you don't get to check that out. And that is actually a really proper maple cap. Check that out. It's half the thickness of the guitar. It's 0.72 inches, and the mahogany is 0.73 inches. Pretty substantial. Now, another feature available only on the wine red model is the fact that you can see the mahogany on the back side. On the other guitars, it's just an ebony finish over that. Now the shape of the body of the SG Supreme is, as far as I can tell, identical to the SG Modern. For me, this is the SG body to beat. Now if you've seen my video on the SG Modern, you know how much I love the aesthetics of that guitar. I think it's just stunning, it looks great, the way the light plays off all the contours. It's just a really fantastic SG body. Now if you're not into SGs, well you're probably not watching this video, but if you are into SGs then you tend to notice some of the more subtle details of the different SG body styles. And one thing that I liked about the SG Modern as well as this SG Supreme is the way that all the contours sort of converge at the end of the horns is one of the thinnest sort of flat spaces you'll see. And to give you an example of that, look at how the strap button hits there. I mean, that is a very, very, very thin spot. And to give you an example of how thin that is, this is the recently released SG61 standard. And that space is actually quite a bit thicker here on the top of the horn compared to the SG Modern design. So I think overall the SG Supreme and the SG Modern by extension are a better representation of the traditional 61 style from actually 1961. But I do think they took some liberties in some places that actually maybe enhanced that design just a little bit. Now when it comes to the actual thickness of the SG Supreme body, it's actually measuring an average of about 1.45 inches as opposed to your traditional SG standard, which is gonna measure in somewhere around 1.35 inches. Now originally I thought that was probably because of the jack plate on the side, but after looking at a couple SGs that I own with jack plates on the side, I realized that I actually have a couple models that are the same sort of thickness as the traditional SG standard at 1.35 inches. So what I actually think it probably is, is maybe just because of the cap, which you can see there where the cap is, 
I think it was just kind of designed that way to give the cap a minimum thickness and to give the mahogany a minimum thickness as well. The neck on the Supreme is a solid mahogany here, and we've also got an ebony fretboard. Now the fretboard itself is a compound radius. What does differentiate this from the SG Modern, however, is that has an asymmetrical neck, and this is just a slim taper neck. When I took measurements of the compound radius of the fretboard, I got nine inches on the first fret, somewhere around 12 inches around the 12th fret, and up to about a 14 inch radius over on the 24th fret, way down here. So it's a decent enough of a change, but not enough to really be jarring, I don't think. Now moving into other dimensions, the nut was actually a little bit thicker at 1.71 inches. The first fret I was getting a 0.83 inches, and down here on the 12th fret I was getting a 0.92. So even though it is a slim taper, it is a little bit beefier than some of the other slim tapers that I've seen and played, which is not really a big deal to me. If you've seen my videos before, then you know I generally prefer some of the more thicker necks. So having a fatter slim taper neck is pretty good for me. It's muy bueno. Now, of course, moving on to the end of the guitar here, you see this fat headstock, which is, uh, if you're not familiar, decently sized bigger than the normal Gibson headstock there on your SG standards. But I tend to like that, and I think it looks classy with the binding around it. The Supreme does feature a set of Burst Bucker Pro pickups. We've got a Burst Bucker Pro rhythm in the neck and a Burst Bucker Pro lead in the bridge here. You can see they've got gold covers on them as well. When we plug these up to the meter, I'm getting a 8.36 in the bridge, a 7.58 in the neck, and around a 3.97 in the middle position. Now moving on to the controls here, our two volume pots are actually push-pull. The upper one controlling the neck pickup and the lower one controlling the bridge pickup, of course. You've got your standard three-way switch here and two tone knobs. Now flipping the guitar over and popping open the cavity to see the innards, what we see here is the two push-pull pots, some 500k tone pots, and we've got a set of orange drop capacitors as well. All in all, it looks pretty straightforward when you compare it to the Les Paul Supreme circuit board wiring. One thing I am curious about is the spacing between these two pickup rings is about 1.665 inches, whereas the rings themselves have a width of 1.75 inches. Now what I'm getting at here is on the Ebony model, you have three pickups, which means they must have shifted the bridge pickup closer to the bridge to fit that in there since the neck pickup is wedged right up against the fretboard. I'm curious if that would alter the sound, if it would be noticeable at all. I'd like to find out one day. We'll see. Now the SG Supreme comes decked out in gold hardware as you can see here and generally I'm not a big fan of gold hardware. In my opinion it tends to tarnish or wear out and generally I don't like that look, especially on a guitar that looks as sharp as this. I want the metal to look as sharp as possible. But I do think that it actually looks pretty good with the wine red in particular. Starting at the bottom of the Supreme here, we've got the gold-plated input jack. Now this is actually one of only two places that I've found on the guitar where we actually have a little bit of chrome, and that would be the actual inside sleeve where your cord would go in. Second bit would be the switch underneath the cover. But everything else that I can tell seems to be actual gold plated. And we'll start here with the stop bar as well as the tunematic bridge, both from advanced plating. Now, if you're curious, the tunematic bridge weighs in at about 28 grams or about one ounce, and the stop bar comes in at about 35 grams. So totaled together, that's about 63 grams or roughly two and a half ounces of weight down here with just the bridge and the stop bar. Moving up the guitar here, we get to our strap buttons and both the strap buttons on this guitar are the larger mushroom style strap buttons, which I really like quite a bit. And I've rarely found the need for a strap lock when I'm using those. Moving up the neck, we've got our ever popular Gibson medium jumbo frets. And then we pop off the cover here and you can see our truss rod. Looks pretty good in there. And lastly, we get to the tuners here, which are gold plated as well. And I'm really glad Gibson went with the Keystone type as I'm really not a big fan of the mini kidney beans that they've been putting on some of the modern guitars lately. Now, a couple of things about the tuners that I'm actually excited about is firstly, Gibson went with the locking tuners as opposed to the unlocking tuners. And it makes your string changes just so much quicker. I'll give you one of the quickest rundowns here of changing a string. You run the string through the stop bar over the saddle like you normally would pull the string through the hole in the tuner up here, give it a tiny tug, and with your other hand, tighten the knurled nub nut on the back side there, and whammo, that's it. Literally, it's about 10 to 15 seconds per string, which shaves off, at least for me, somewhere around 10 minutes of changing your strings. I think it's incredibly helpful. 
And the second thing that I like about these tuners is in a first for any Gibson guitar that I've measured, they actually put 18 to 1 standard tuning ratio on these, whereas Gibson normally puts, as you probably know, 14 to 1 tuning ratio. Even though these tuners are locking, I still think that little extra 4 to 1 ratio gives you just enough fine tuning to really get it pretty accurate. When it comes to other materials on this guitar, well, we'll start down here by the control knobs. We've got black top hats with gold tone and volume inserts. Moving up from there, we've got our black pickup selector switch and the black pickup rings. You can see on the guitar here that we've got this really nice binding on the neck and of course these inlays, mother of pearl, which really make the neck look really nice, I think. Our nut here is a Graf Tech nut and it was set up pretty good as far as I can tell. And then we get to our truss rod cover, which says Supreme on it. One thing that I think was interesting is the Les Paul Supreme model says Les Paul Supreme, whereas the SG version only says Supreme. Maybe that's just because most SGs don't actually say SG on them and most Les Pauls do. Moving on up from there, we get to the chandelier inlay up here at the top, as well as the Gibson logo, which are both mother of pearl. Very nice touch, I think. Flipping over the back side of the guitar, we get to the cavity cover, which is just your standard SG cover in all black. As far as standing and playing this guitar, well, if you're an SG player, you kind of know what you're already in for, but if you're not familiar, it's going to be a little offset and it's going to take a minute to get used to it, but that's just the way that SGs are. Now, you're also familiar with the neck dive concept that is all too popular with SGs. Somebody did ask Caesar, the CEO of Gibson, if the neck dive issues were taken care of on the Supreme, and he said, it is balanced. That's all he said. So I was really eager to give that a test, and I can show you here that it was balanced, but I'll just say it's on the cusp. I mean, it's it was ready to go, it never quite did, but it definitely had that feeling of, you know, if I went too far one way, it was, it was gonna give up on me, but it didn't. I'll just say it didn't. Now, when it comes to the weight of this guitar, I'm getting a 7.35 pounds, or roughly seven pounds, six ounces, which isn't bad. It's a pretty nice weight, I think, for, you know, a beefier, SG for sure. And as mentioned before, the beveling is really nice and dramatic in all the right places, so it's it's really easy to get to some of these higher registries. And I, I, I've said this before on my SG Modern video, which I believe has the same exact body, that this guitar really just fits well in like this sort of nook in your body. If you can get your strap height just ironed out, the SG sits amazing when you're playing it. And I think that's really good for when you need to sort of lean into the guitar to get something out of it. Or if you want to conversely let it go and, and you know, fly wild. I think it's a great guitar in that regard. It's a, definitely a pure rock and roll guitar for sure. So next up I'm going to do a sound test and I'll run through just a couple things to get a few sounds out of it. Nothing too crazy. And uh, we'll see what you think of that.
There you have it, guys. That is my review and deep dive on the SG Supreme, and I'm curious what your thoughts on it are as well. Some of the comments that I've seen in regards to the Les Paul Supreme, you could apply them to the SG Supreme, and that would be, is it just an SG Modern with a $1,000 premium on it? I tend to have a similar thought. I mean, when you look at the similarities of these guitars, there are a lot of them. And when you look at the differences, they're purely aesthetic things like the gold-plated hardware, the updated ornate inlays, the larger headstock. And in fact, if you were to get a 2019 SG Modern, there's even more in common. That would be the locking tuners as well as a more strategic strap button position. I think on the old SG Modern, the strap button is up here on the horn, whereas it's returned to the middle on the new SG Modern. So really, I don't know. I mean, the difference in the top, you get supposedly a triple A top here, whereas on the SG Modern, you get a double A top. But even when we pop these things open and look inside, they are identical when it comes to the electronics. The same pickups. I'd argue it's probably the same exact harness that's made and thrown in there. I mean, it is pretty darn close. So yeah, $1,000 more, I'm not so sure of. But then on the other hand, there are plenty of other American-made guitars that are 3500 and more made by ESP USA, Fender, Rickenbacker, PRS. So, you know, you got to weigh what you're getting here versus what you're getting somewhere else and, and make your own judgment on that, of course. From a purely guitar playing standpoint outside of the price, I mean, yeah, it plays great. It better play great for that price, right? Uh, it's one of my favorites to play. I can't say that it's too dissimilar from playing the SG Modern with the fact that it does have a little bit more balance to it than the Modern. But hey, that's worth something too as well. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my video on this guitar. If you did like it, please like the video. Please subscribe. That definitely helps me make more content like this. All right, next time. <laughs>